Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm Nanako. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, uh, Haunian and organizers of this symposium. I'm very honored to be here uh, in Singapore again. And I'm also very pleased and honored to be in this panel to hear all those like uh, informations from like uh, professionals in the dramaturgy. And I hope like my role, my responsibility in this panel is more about dance or performance. So and I kind of wrote uh, a little bit about the dramaturgy 101 part, but maybe I, I skip or I, I just skim it, and then I go into the dance part. So uh, ah, and then um, I, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not a native speaker, so I wrote down text. So I I, I tend to read the text, but the, please let me know if you have any questions or any uh, concerns that in terms of pronunciations and so. So like uh, in the morning session, we talked about the lessons and more like a history of dan uh, dramaturgy. And then I think still like uh, from Dan's point of view, uh, it's very important to have like a three points in lessons, Hamburg issue, Hamburg dramaturgy. And which is actually uh, Hirata Eiichiro-san has written uh, in his text, in his book on dramaturgy in Japanese. So like uh, there are three parts, like uh, three points in uh, the work of dramaturgs, which is planning of repertoire is one, and production, uh, sorry, uh, spiel, uh, uh, sorry, his, uh, his role as dramaturg entail the planning of repertoire, production, and education, and functions that still remain central to the dramaturg's role in contemporary German theater. And then these three uh, functions are still regarded as uh, main uh, functions in the German associations of Dramaturgs, Dramaturgische Gesellschaft. So I take uh, this kind of definitions as a part of my dance dramaturgs work. And then uh, the next part is I go uh, briefly into the post-dramatic theatre, because it's a kind of the link to the performance uh, dance theatre that I'm going to talk about. So a uh, theatre scholar, German theatre scholar, Hans Dies Lehmann, describes this new form of theatre which appeared in Europe in the 1980s as including both dramatic performance and dance. It would eventually be framed as post-dramatic theater, and in the following quotations, Lehmann explains some of the changes. I, I quote this small text. In post-dramatic theater, performance, art, and dance, the traditional hierarchy of theatrical elements has almost vanished. As the text is no longer the central and superior factor, all the other elements like space, light, sound, music, movement, and gesture tend to have an equal weight in the performance process. Therefore, new dramaturgical forms and skills are needed in terms of a practice that no longer reinforces the subordination of all elements under one, but rather a dynamic balance to be obtained anew in each performance." End quote. I think that's also we discussed in the morning session that the, how this like, complexity of the performance dramaturgy could be after this uh, specific time of this uh, theater history. So I skipped. So, um, yes. This uh, post-dramatic complexity in dramaturgy merges into the avant-garde movements within contemporary dance genres and practices. Uh, in Europe, the field of experimental dance, traditional ballet, and signature techniques, such as glam technique, are no longer the starting points for creating choreography. Therefore, new dramaturgical skills are required for two primary reasons. The influence of the US postmodern dance movement since the 1960s, and the impact of performance art. And dance scholar Miriam van Imschut explains that in new forms of dance, dramaturgical skills can be understood as a competence in composing actions and reading their potential for significance in the weavings of the performance's fabric. That's her sentence. And this change in the directions of a new dramaturgical form of creation can be interpreted as a shift towards more research-oriented open and interdisciplinary ways of choreographing, 
which often require the involvement of a practicing dance dramaturg. A dramaturg's practical experience often articulates their particular approach to dance dramaturgy, which comprises descriptions of what dramaturgy may infuse in different working and creating process. Compared to the dramaturgical theater, uh, com compared to the dramaturg dr dramaturgical practice in theater, which may seek to distill the narrative meaning of a theater piece for its intended audience, in one sense, dance dramaturgs aim to broaden the possibility of leading a piece in conjunction with its medium and method. Dance and performance studies scholar Andre Lepecki explains that his role as dance dramaturg for Meg Stewart was to verbalize what he saw happening in a scene with what he calls metaphorical explosions between sequences of events that happen randomly with no logic or coherent dramaturgy. A more comprehensive and critical discussions of the emerging piece would take place after rehearsals. Dance dramaturgy also invites critical discourse in order to talk about dance. And uh, towards the latter half of the rehearsal process, uh, Lepecki and uh, he, his choreographer, Meg Stewart, worked together to make the choreography more cohesive. So his performance analysis and contribution to discussions in and outside of the studio affected both the creative process and through that, the reformulations of event sequences. Therefore, dance dramaturgy in this case is the process through which interrelated metaphorical, analytical, and critical discourses are absorbed into the creative process. Yes. So um, in my understanding of dramaturgy in general, the term has two meanings. We discussed the definitions of the dramaturgy in the morning, but I also, yes, my text is also printed in the flyer. But the, so one is analysis of theater theory, how we see performance, and theater theory in practice. So that's how to make a performance. And the dramaturg integrates these two meanings of dramaturgy through his or her work. That, that's my take. Uh, in the field of dramaturgy, dance dramaturgy is in particular is an innovating field. In contrast to classic dramatic theater, in movement and dance performance productions, the audience are confronted with many different vocabularies and disciplinary perspectives, none of which play a hierarchical central role, that they generally are not equally well versed in all of them. And um, according to the Flemish dramaturg, Miriam van Kerkhoven, Dramaturgy and the dramaturg reflect the moment when theoretical and conceptual inquiries within dance become more pronounced and embedded. So this engagement with discourse has produced a wide range of new approaches to dance that emphasize classical conceptions of choreography as well as foregrounding content and critical debate in and around the work. So this is uh, the kind of theoretical part of my talk. And then I try to include more uh, concrete examples that I have been working in Japan and also outside of Japan. So as an example of the theoretical approach in dance dramaturgy, uh, I introduced two of my international dance projects. One is the Dance Archive Box project, and the other is my research project on dance dramaturgy and aging at the Kyoto University of the Arts and Design. In the recent European contemporary dance scene, the form of the enactment provides an opportunity for artists to reconstruct dance histories as being non-deterministic, non-linear, and non-homogeneous. The questions of how to archive this most ephemeral art of dance illuminates the ontological and political questions that concern dance history. So when a dance is archived to be recreated later, the originators of the work are mostly dead, 
which is also the reason for archiving their legacy of dance. However, when a dance is archived and passed on to a second artist for recreations, what happens if both of the originator and the second artist are still present? Do they need to have the same communal roots or to consent to collaborate? If the second artist takes certain artistic liberties by recontextualizing the dance, does that degrade the first artist's work? Does the idea of sharing a dance subvert the boundaries of ownership and function in favor of artistic freedom for the second artist? Do the ecological circulation and artistic impact in the form of interweaving exceed the risks of cultural reappropriation or not? How do the historical economic backgrounds of the artist Im involved affect the power politics in the process of sharing dance? So in this project, um, I discuss a contemporary dance archive project, Dance Archive Box. And this uh, project was proposed and initially conceived in 2014 by Singaporean theater director, Ong Ken Sen. And uh, it was presented at the International Festival of Arts uh, last year. And uh, this pro program was originally launched in collaboration with the Saison Foundation uh, and with the contemporary dance makers in Japan. And in this project, dance makers archive their own works, not for, conserva not for conservation, but for performing and for having them performed. So it was planned that this international program would end after it was handed over from its first sponsor in Japan to its second one in Singapore. But after the CIFA, after the CIFA I inherited the project and uh, recreating uh, this presentation in Japan at the performing arts meeting in Yokohama this year. So maybe I show some photos of this box. So uh, this is one of the archive boxes that we uh, developed in the first part of the project. And when the artists explored how to pass on works to people who do not belong to their group, I, as a dance dramaturg, play the role of cultural translator and negotiator to democratize dance knowledge without being submissive to culturally imperialistic globalized power. <laughs> Yeah, so communicating unwritten narratives in dance histories is allied with my role as a dramaturg for this project. So my objectives were to coax the various histories from the archive boxes and see if they could be transformed into more powerful realities, as well as to communicate through all oral history with the artist vital information that was not included in the boxes. So one example is Chie Ito's archive box, which was performed also by Natsuko Tezuka, Rani Nea, and Ohisi Hanayagi as users of this archive box. But I show, so just like briefly what's inside, and it's a costumes and videos and uh, the, the maps, uh, kind of uh, cue seats of the seats. Yes. And um, yes, so since uh, her, her, the Chie Ito's announcement last year that her dance company would be moving on from contemporary dance, Ito has been studying the uncontrollable nature of clouds, something she had remarked upon during this archival process. Her remarks suggest that she was inspired by a phenomenon in the audience whose sense of self proliferated through performances of her archived work. Such essential information had slipped through the cracks and was not found in her archive box at the first, uh, part, first, phase, first part of the project, but was only discovered through oral history or through communicating with artists. 
and through the process of making their responses uh, to the box, some users, uh, we call artists as users, who receive the box and make a response to the artist. And uh, we, yes, we call the, these artists as users of archive box. And some users started re-experiencing the history of the archive boxes and investigating archivists. So uh, the person who made the archive boxes are, are archivists. The archivist personalities, which were included within the performative aspect in the archive box. Along the way, I, uh, with archivists and users, experienced linguistic and cultural trans translations within the global circulations of information. And through their own process and in confronting the others, both archivists and users encountered conflict, negotiation, control, resistance, arrogance, and vulnerability. Through the archivists might have tried to retain their original forms, they could never remain unchanged in the users' responses. In contrast, Miraculous coincidences also happen through exchanging archive boxes, even though archivists and users had never shared this information before. As a dramaturg, I played the role of the eyewitness to observe these incidents. For example, this is uh, Tezuka Natsuko's uh, archive box. It's a grass jar, and the letter is inside. And then his class jar transmitted to Benuri Pelela from Sri Lanka. And uh, her concept of decolonizing the body by Natsuko Tezuka, uh, this is uh, so then Benuri Pelela interpreted as with Sri Lankan passport in relation to westernization and modernization. Natsuko Tezuka once commented that through the archive box, she wanted to transmit a kind of heat she felt during the creative process. During her previous creative process with her dancers, many of them appeared to be suffering from fevers <laughs> during the rehearsals, as if they were undergoing an initiation with the group. <laughs> her archive box as well might secretly demand that users be initiated into the heat. In her archive box, of course, the fire could not be stored in a jar, to be transferred to the next user. However, in the case of Pelela, the fire appeared again to burn her visa application form during her response. By setting fire to her visa application, her underwear and her hair, and cleansing them in a bottle with powered milk, powdered milk in her ritual, a Pelela aimed at setting herself free from the colonial past of her country, Sri Lanka. Regarding the practice of dance dramaturgy, I also carried out a research project that examined dance dramaturgy and aging and Kyoto University of Arts and Design, and explored the historical practice of dance dramaturgy in relation to current performance making. So this is the next project. So, okay, I, I wrap up. So uh, basically, so this project is I organize um, uh, two seminars, and then first part is uh, the seminar with Raymond Hoke, who is a German Germanist reading choreographer performer, and also the dramaturg of Pina Bausch. And so uh, I invited he and his team to Kyoto and present his piece along with his, uh, his seminar on dramaturgy. So dramaturgy in dance has really been predictable elements. Thus, Hoke's collaboration with Pina, Pina Bausch between 1980 and 1989 is often cited as one of the first example of a dramaturg working in a dance field. In the first seminar, dialogue between Hoke and his collaborators was presented as a practical theory in dance dramaturgy. And according to Mr. Hoke, dramaturgs in German, German performing arts prior to him concentrated solely on research in the library and were not related to production scenes. So he was deeply involved in Pina Bausch's creative process 
where she had almost no playa work, no playa repertoire to be based on. And with dancers and collaborators, they started from scratch in rehearsals. And he took this new role as dramaturg, as a dance dramaturg, which turned out to be historically related to Pina Bausch's establishment of dance theater, so dance theater. So maybe I skip the, the scene. And then the second seminar, I invited a Japanese, so this is Hoke and Pina Bausch. And he also presented his uh, piece uh, on aging, well, on Judy, evening, and evening with Judy is the title. So the second seminar, I invited uh, Japanese thinkers on drama duty. So one is uh, Kiku Kotoyama, and the other one is a theater director in Kabuki, contemporary Kabuki productions, uh, Yuichi Kinoshita. And he also, he played the role of dramaturg, from my point of view, in his contemporary kabuki take of uh, Klozuka or other kabuki repertoires. And he, he also talked about uh, what do we need dramaturgs in Japan, my thoughts, while working on Kinoshita Kabuki's Klozuka. So he also insisted that the dramaturgs need the specialities in the field of theater or dance. He also is, he's a, he's like, he's a specialist in theater uh, kabuki theater, so that's also, that, may, that strengthens his role in the theater productions. That's also he explained in that seminar. And uh, Kikuko Toyama also explained how these social aspects uh, are like related to the dramaturgy of the piece, or how the artworks, uh, how, how the, the activities within and without the art context in, uh, Asian, in, in Asia and in Japan, could be also interpreted as an art or as a dance uh, piece. And somehow, like, I, I think it's also like a social, how we include the social aspect into the dance is uh, the role of my uh, work as a dramaturg if I work in those uh, social dance or kind of uh, the dance project, which is related to the social context in Japanese, context, in Japanese uh, societies. Ah, just, just one. Sure. sure. Uh, so dance dramaturgy is still an emerging field, uh, and even though this subject has been discussed since the 90s, 1980s, when dance dramaturgy was introduced in Asia, Asia, it was also inevitable that the developing critical discourse would dissolve into that about traditional and contemporary dance in Asia, rather than adapting the existing Euro-American discourse into an Asian context. In that sense, the practical theory that has been absorbed into Japanese theater and dance, in my examples, such as oral histories or communicating with artists, needs to be reconsidered in relation to practice as performing, along with the theory embodied by the dramaturgs at work. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to all three speakers. Uh, I'd like to quickly open this up for discussion, comments, and questions, uh, whether it's panelists speaking to each other or from the floor. Do we have any comments or observations or questions that you'd like to address uh, to particular speakers? People are still getting warmed up. I will start with one. <laughs> Please think of others. I'm sure it will... Uh, you know, come to mind. One of the things that I picked up, especially from the first two uh, presentations with Shintaro and Peter, were how not so much the definition or the unpegging of the word dramaturgy or the term dramaturgy or even the concept, but rather the different forms that have evolved. Uh, kind of interesting how especially for those of us who teach theatre, where we talk about different forms of theatre also, there seems to be, with current um, developments in dramaturgy, some kind of alignment with dramaturgy to define theatre. From example of the slow dramaturgy to dramaturgies of the real, right? And then uh, Peter brought up new media dramaturgy, 
where there seems to be almost an interchange of terminology of the word theater with dramaturgy at play here. I would seek some kind of comment, actually. I, th I think it's a good observation. Um, uh, no, no, I'm just one. Uh, it, it's it's setting. It's it's making me reflect back on, I guess, the history of, uh, I guess, the, what we will call the discipline of theatre studies, right. and the way that it has had to define itself uh, in relation to literary and cultural theory, um, but also trends, uh, I, I guess, in in the humanities more broadly that. Uh, um, I think change the nature of the way we talk about our subject. And so dramaturgy, I think, is in some ways relating to some other contemporary theoretical discourses. If we're talking about dramaturgy as a definition of the to define theatre, we're really talking about uh, uh, the way in which dramaturgy, with, at least within the, the study of theatre, as we might teach it in the academy, draws attention to questions of genre, form, uh, context, um, uh, interdisciplinarity. And it doesn't, and the important aspect of this is it doesn't privilege one particular, if you, to want to use, you know, critical term, sign system of theater. So, you know, when I, when I went, I, I'm, I had a very unusual entry into theatre studies because I'd never studied theatre studies. I'd, I'd studied drama, but I actually, my PhD was in Japanese studies and I got a job in a theatre program uh, where semiotics was being taught quite rigorously. And uh, I guess the interesting thing there is that all of the, the kind of sign structures of theatre were being politicised and it was a moment of cultural, high cultural deconstruction. But essentially, it was privileging certain kinds of things. It was privileging bodies, and it was, to a degree, privileging, privileging a kind of textual analysis, or at least a very deconstructed version of that. I think the interest in dramaturgy is precisely because the field has become more interdisciplinary, and we can no longer just privilege one or two indicators of the performance experience. And so dramaturgy allows us to think, I could think across a range of experiences of theatre simultaneously. So I don't know whether that's helpful, but uh, it's certainly the case that uh, myself and quite a few other people use the word dramaturgy yeah. as, a, as, a, as a way of perhaps distancing ourselves critically from, uh, the, from the limitations of yeah, some of the other critical, sub, uh, critical frameworks. Um, much um, just um, I, I think you know dramaturgy is has always to do with the structure and you know self arranging elements um, into a structure weaving elements into a text and so in you know this definition can be applied to many new things and my, I'm not actually because I'm Principally, working in my working language is uh, Japanese and French, right. and I, I'm not a great reader of um, critical discourses in English, so, so I'm not too familiar with um, um, all the new dramaturgies mm -hmm. you mentioned. Um, so that's all I can say now. No, no. It's it's um, it just also reminds me. I mean, theatre studies doesn't determine theatre or performance. Mm -hmm. it, it really doesn't, you know, I mean, as much as professors might think that we're important, we're not. Um, um, we, I, th I think what we're studying using that critical terminology is absolutely something that has come from uh, developments that, for example, Nanako and Shintaro were talking about. The, the field has changed, so the, the, the way we talk about the field, we've introduced that vocabulary, I think, into some of the critical frameworks, partly in response to the fact that a lot of people working in the academy are also practitioners. You know, there's a lot of reasons for it, but I think that's a significant one.
So, do we have any, or is everyone still mulling? All right. I have another one. <laughs> um, this, sure. Hello, hi. Um, mm. So, I'm a playwright based in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean I'm naturally hostile to dramaturgs, uh, but, but I'm just Wonder. looking at this title, uh, looking for an, for an Asian context, and uh, I'm just wondering about how, um, you know, that, uh, uh, could it be addressed a bit more? Uh, why would we want to look for an Asian context? Uh, is there an assumption that dramaturgical practice is something that is emerging from, let's say, you know, Western or metropolitan centers of, of performance? And are there notions of paternalism? Are there notions of uh, imperialism involved in, say, so-called importing dramaturgical concepts into this part of the world? Uh, is there an assumption that, you know, um, that drama in different parts of the world are, are evolving in stages and uh, a level of sophistication is achieved once you have a dramaturg uh, for your performance? <laughs> Uh, you know, so let's say you want to pitch uh, a work uh, to, to a festival circuit, for example. Would it look better in your proposal if you say, oh, I have a dramaturg working with me? So, so this, these questions, you know, why, why the need for, for an Asian context and questions about paternalism, uh, imperialism, maybe importing certain structures, let's say, in the visual arts world of the curator into theatre and performance. Thank you. I'm just going to answer that and open up to the three of you. Uh, the subtitle of looking for that Asian context is totally my responsibility. As I was setting up this entire program, there was this call or there was this need for me to literally look at what it means to be or what it means to collect or put together, group together Asian dramaturgs and why do we need to network with fellow Asian dramaturgs. And one of the things that I shied away from was to put together a program where we did look at the theoretical viewpoints of dramaturgy in practice. Then there was this really great pressure for me to say, okay, do we actually need to look at what is Asian dramaturgy? Is there such a thing as Asian dramaturgy? Um, when I wrote to the three speakers, this is just a bit of background information, I left it quite open there was always that, that, uh, that email suggestion that they could pick it up or might not. So it's great that we are getting questions of these deeper political and social cultural implications into areas of imperialism, post-colonialism, what it means to inherit dramaturgy from a Western point of view. Um, I do not personally have any answers for that. But I do know that, that from this morning's closed door session, one thing was for sure, the term itself, dramaturgy, was problematic and is and remains problematic in so many ways, linguistically, politically, socioculturally, in all areas. And we're just beginning to understand maybe we should do away with the term and just call it something else, but then what? Because then the problem starts all over again. So that's how I'm reading what's been going on this morning and to now I've been, I, I have the same actually question at the back of my mind going, no one's really addressing the Asian thing. But having said that, the anxiety of course then goes into why should we address the Asian thing when dramaturgy itself is new to begin with anyway and why put on, why locate it specifically even though I did say it's Asian dramaturgical aspects here. So just to give a bit of context. I don't know, um, the term Asia is still something mysterious to me. Um, <laughs> Japan, um, <laughs> uh, Japan as, um, as a country, it's a, a bit like um, UK in Europe. Um, we are a part of, um, Asia, and at the same time, we are outside. It's a bit um, like a position of a dramaturg. <laughs> <laughs> we are inside and outside at the same time, and I, 
Yeah. And <laughs> if I can just add that it's, I think, for me, uh, looking at the word Asian in context of what we're doing, it's very much, this, I, I would say, the same problem as the discipline of area studies. Southeast Asian studies, Asia studies, East Asian studies, right? I think I've got two slightly incoherent responses. I remember a really nice story that the very distinguished playwright and director, Sato Mokoto, was many years ago, did a collaboration project with the Australian playwright, John Romerell. Uh, John had written a play when he was a young man that was about uh, Australian prisoners of war and their treatment in the Jap hands of the Japanese. And uh, this, this production was re revived, translated into Japanese, and Sato did a wonderful production of it, actually. And uh, at the time, I mean, this is a, just a, an apocryphal comment, but I don't know whether it's true or not, but apparently Sato said to John, well, yes, of course we'll work together because everybody else in Asia hates us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so we're natural allies. Um, so I, I think this concept of Asia is, is deeply fraught. Um, and um, I'm, it's, it's not really my place to say this inside Asia, but as, I guess, a professional scholar of, of, the, of the field, um, I'm, I'm somewhat resistant to re-theorizing back to certain kinds of essentialist cultural binaries. Um, I think you've taken a critical term which is ambiguous and you're exploring that critical term. It, 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 it's a helpful term in some ways because it, it holds a very imprecise position within uh, artistic practice more broadly. Um, and, and so possibly it is a term that uh, can have some uh, interesting uh, possibilities for practitioners in this, in, in this, you know, in this time and place. Uh, but I'm very much taken. I think there's a there's a more sensible answer in um, in in your comments about the way in which, when you bring the conversation of dramaturgy into particular places, they inflect through local conditions and and local artistic practices. We very much had that experience in Australia. We did a 10-year project of series of workshops that brought together very diverse groups of artists to talk about this uh, idea, and we got many different answers. But I'm very much struck by the comment at the end of your paper about the way in which, if you bring that conversation about dance dramaturgy into this region, you have this um, immediately, I mean, almost confront uh, uh, some kind of dialogue around tradition and modernity. and. Uh, and so, you know, if there is a reason for bringing dramaturgy into this particular region, that might well be one of them, because it's a very fascinating, I think, um, set of questions that are, that are being provoked very much specifically within this region. That's not a question that arises when you talk about the difference between ballet and contemporary performance in Europe, for example. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I think maybe that's, that's uh, somewhere where we can take this conversation. You had a question? That was my comment. Oh, that was comment. Do you have a question? Do you have a question also to follow up? Or... No, Peter. Peter. No, 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 I was going to draw was... attention to <laughs> that. I was very struck by that, uh, by that uh, comment. I found it really helpful. Just to really quickly contextualize a bit, in this morning, there were uh, many discussions on the fact that within the cultural practices of Asia itself, the term dramaturgy, how do we align dramaturgy with mentorship for one? The idea of senior artists working alongside young artists of all fields, right? So there is, and I think uh, Heli Minati from Indonesia, in fact, struggled to use words to describe what would be normally termed or commonly termed as a dramaturg but rather they wanted to break away from that because of the strong hierarchical systems, social cultural systems there, where when you, when you have a young artist with a pet with an older one, there is deference coming into play, there is the guru worship coming into play. How do we then get away from these systems? Um, that's something that we were talking about and, and unfortunately we just talk about it. I think there is still much to talk about. 
where then it goes back to Peter's uh, suggestion of dramaturgy being discursive yeah, and dialectical, as pointed out. Okay, moving on. Do we have a question from the floor? We have a gentleman there. Uh, um, a, a question slash observation. Sure. Um, the, this, uh, this context of drama dramaturgy and Asian context, for me, seems to be drawing things that originally were not linked to link now, and seems to be dovetailing towards a certain common direction. What I mean is this. Uh, I can't remember the speaker who highlighted this notion of uh, being aware of one's own self, being aware of one's own processes. Dramaturgy draws awareness the, within the context of theater or performance. Um, I think that was Alison. Uh, Alison, right, that was this morning. Self-identification. Um, and I was just thinking, um, as, as we move further and further away from this notion of a monoculture to the multi, to the trans, it seems to reveal that a larger body of knowledge is emerging. It's so large, no one or a few person can easily take down this body of knowledge. We need people to hold hands, to play with, to intervene, to disrupt, to make sense of all these things. And it seems like what originally appeared to be, you know, the director should know dramaturgy, the lifting of the page to a stage, that, that the enlivening, the embodying, that or Brechtian approach, demonstration. Regardless, the director seems to be the one who has to know. To suggest that a drama touch or someone else with this person to do dramaturgy may, may seem to suggest this person lacking in info historically, aesthetically, performatively, etc. But it, but it seems to re reveal there is a gap, a critical gap happening not only uh, in many places. We need someone else to hold hand with. And as we mentioned earlier, this dramaturg is not just one person, can be many in all forms, all contexts. can be the actors, the script writer, the arts managers, etc. So, so, so this larger body of knowledge from the context of culture, as we move away into something 21st century, the, Multi, many, and this no, and then there's this, this other trajectory with, with, with reference to Asian context. I mean, Asian context etymologically is 13th century refers to this notion of the land of rising sun, which requires us to have a global sense of a global existence, land of in the east where the sun rises, a sense of a global. And who coins it? Is it a Western context? Is it a Western invention that we are called Asia? We are in the East. Who called us to be in the East? And then therefore Asia. I mean, it sounds very post-colonial. I mean, what is, I mean, to, to, to dialogue about Asian using English in itself is interesting. So um, I, I think the larger context here is perhaps in this search for Asian context, we are asking about, I mean, to be fair, maybe practitioners situated in Asia geographically, how are we doing theater and what are the dramaturgical processes involved in our work? Just a thought. Thank you for that. Do we have any comments or questions? Charlene, and then the gentleman over there. Uh, just to add on a historical note, in the 1980s, if not early 90s, Christian Jit. Uh, pioneer theatre director in Malaysia, uh, historian, critic, educator. And in many ways, I think he was also a dramaturg, though that word was hardly used at the time, uh, was writing about what is the contemporary, the indigenous contemporary that was emerging in Southeast Asia, but Malaysia particularly. And he wrote about what he termed the combination of Eastern and Western dramaturgies. So just introduce that here in this forum because we're looking at this notion of an Asian context and the struggle with terminology is not new. Uh, and I think even when Christian was writing about this notion of Eastern and Western dramaturgies, he goes on to sort of clarify the Western dramaturgy as highly literary and text oriented in comparison to the more contextually grounded and 
um, emergent in a way, although that too is a problematic dichotomy, obviously, that in relation to the contemporary then raises other questions. But as the suggestion of a frame within which to consider an option to, at the time, the modern, which was the dialogue that was percolating for him and other practitioners of that time, uh, that was a suggestion and that was one frame. And, I, and it just reminds me that the terminologies not only are unstable now, but then you look back and what was unstable then, then gets a little bit fixed and you forget, you know, and here I refer to it, so Christian's not around anymore to go, well, that's not what I meant and you got me all wrong, <laughs> as he most likely would have done. But, uh, you know, it sort of gets fossilized on a page and then, yeah. uh, you know, it relates to the notion of what then is archiving and documenting, which also came up this morning. So this space is one that has its history, but then once you say it's historical, we forget that it too is an unstable and fluctuating history. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, there was one more. We'll take one more comment. And uh, Hands up if you want the, the, the mic to go to you, please. Hello. Hi. Um, I seem to get it. This session is, first of all, to unpack what it means of the ideas of dramaturgy in Asia and in Singapore. And I'd just like to maybe unpack that a little bit further in the Singapore context, because in Singapore, there's, there, we, we studied there's theatre studies and there's performance studies, and, and lots of people study at, at a tertiary level. And I just want to understand in practical terms, I mean, um, as a performance studies scholar, or, or what, makes it dif what makes you different from, a, from someone who calls himself, her or herself, a dramaturg? Uh, what kind of overlaps or, 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 or things that you like to, you are fascinated about? What was the difference be between, uh, 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 for example, uh, a theatre studies scholar or, or someone who calls himself a dramaturg? Um, and then the first, second is more of a comment. Uh, for me, I feel maybe it's not so productive at this point to talk about the imperialism or the post-colonial ideas of, of dramaturgy in Asia, but I, I feel perhaps it is important for, for, for the Singapore scene to, to talk about um, the value of, 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 of the dance scene or the theatre scene venturing into the, the ideas of dramaturgy because I feel that, that if more theatre directors or dance makers would work with a dramaturg here in Singapore to create works, it would, would make um, perhaps really the works more s uh, conceptual, more sophisticated, so to speak, uh, 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 more critical, I mean, uh, uh, and, and yeah, yes, yeah, so, so to speak, yeah, yeah, which, like Alfin says, would, would get you onto the festival circuit around the world, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Thank you so much on, about, on that. Uh, very quickly, just wanted to say that I'm actually quite taken or reminded, thank you for reminding us about zapping from good old Tadashi. It's true, the zapping, I think, is something that we should think about where if we're looking at cartography, mapping, which is important, where there is a certain way of charting known paths or unknown paths into known what territories, there is always then the quick disappearances and reappearances, quick discoveries and rediscoveries and undiscoveries, actually, that, that might be happening here. So on that note, we would like to quickly zap this panel uh, I would like to draw it to an end. I'd like to thank Shintaro, Nanako, and Peter. Thank you. And uh, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, our next session is at four, where we'll be going into our first dramaturgy in action, and hopefully we'll shed more light into the kinds of practical realities that dramaturgs or practicing dramaturgs are dealing with in different fields. Uh, more importantly, I think there is a request to clear the space to help us organizers put together or reconfigure the uh, tables for the next session. Thank you very much.